unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Now the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, verses 12. I want to share something there. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verses 12, this is a verse many people speak, many people confess, many people profess, many people proclaim, many people claim, many people speak over and over and over and over and over until it's almost as obvious that to the degree of how much they speak, they know the full extent and gravity of this. And I pray that by God I will be given utterance to Articulate fully what this means so you know how to fight. Praise God. Praise the Lord, somebody. The Bible says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. And he says, Next verse. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things. He charged him in the sight of God. This, this charge, this charge, don't worry, it's the spirit. This charge was given to him before God. That means when Paul was speaking to his son Timothy, it was not a light charge. It was not a light commandment. It was not a small instruction. It was powerful. He told him this, I'm speaking before God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. This is not just a normal statement I'm giving you, Timothy. God bears witness on the Christ themselves as I charge these things to you. And the next verse says, that thou keep this commandment, this particular commandment, he says, without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potent, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The word therefore show he shall appear. Himself he shall appear. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Now Paul is telling Timothy, he says, this charge, this is serious. I charge this before God. Before Jesus Christ. This is a serious commandment that you must hold without spot, unrebukable, without any hesitation, without any condemnation on your side. This is something you have to keep without anybody saying that you fell even a slight of this house. When you're dealing with religious people, they say, you have to keep all the commandments. You know, you have to keep all the commandments. So they have taught us to keep all the commandments, but not the commandment of faith. If somebody lies, they are filled with guilt because they carry the Spirit of God in them. And then the next thing they'll say is, Oh God, I'm sorry, I lied, I shouldn't. You see, that's how you're supposed to be when you walk out of faith. Oh, you didn't get what I just said, did you? When you walk out of faith, you're supposed to be so sorry. You're supposed to be so sorry. God asks us to walk without sport when it comes to the commandment of faith, the good fight. When he talks about the good fight, he says, this one, you have to be sportless. There has to be not found in you any issue that accuses you, that finds you guilty of breaking this commandment. It is holy, it is sacred, it is great, it is big. Tell somebody the fight of good faith. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 20, verses 18, it says, Every purpose is established by counsel. And it says, And by, with good advice, you make war. If you want to fight well, if you want to fight the right way, the Bible says you must have good advice. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Proverbs 24 verse 6 says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. By wise counsel, by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. The reason why people fight in battles and they're getting defeated every other day is because they're fighting the wrong way. He says, seize my son to listen to the instruction of error that causes men to err from the words of knowledge. There are instructions we receive on the altar. There are things we read. There are things we watch on television. There are things people share. And these very things cause us to wear off, to err in the words of knowledge. Not everything that they teach us on the pulpit is true. He says, in the last days, the spirit speaks expressly. The men shall give heed to seducing spirits. And they shall give into doctrines of devils. And they shall preach the doctrines of devils, even as the doctrine of Christ. There are people who preach faith the wrong way. The way we're talking about the good fight of faith. Some people don't understand what faith is. Oh, what is faith? Oh, faith is the substance of his hope for the evidence. These things not seen. For by it. You see, everybody knows that verse. Almost everybody I know. They know that faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. But what really is faith? Beyond the words that you're speaking. What is substance? The Greek word actually for substance is material. But if you're talking about healing, you have the material of healing. You're not asking God to send the material of healing. Oh, you didn't get it. Hallelujah. The Bible says you've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything. He says you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. When he says faith is the substance of things hoped for, it means you carry the material of everything you hope for. At the smell of hope, there has to be a certainty in your spirit that you carry the material. You don't understand what I just said. At the smell of faith, you must carry the conviction that you carry the material of everything you're hoping for. Do you hope to be a success in this world? Thank God for the material. Hallelujah, somebody. It's not a reckless, passive experience of relating with God of God, send material. No, faith does not believe God for material. No, faith begins with the material. Did you understand what I just said? Faith begins with the substance. That is why faith comes by hearing, comma, and hearing by the word. KJV, hearing by the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Of course it sounds like by hearing the word, but it's not so. It's deeper than that. Not everybody who hears the word receives faith. The people who sit in the scripture every day, the Bible says they are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But when he says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That means we sit by the word to hear. There is no articulate interpretation of the word of God that goes higher than the first place of hearing when you're reading the word of God. God wants to open your ears to hear him speak to you when you're reading the Bible. You're not supposed to receive the word of God like you're receiving information. You're not supposed to receive the word of God like you're downloading data, computers. Sometimes they download what they cannot interpret. And present it to the reader to interpret. No scripture, the Bible says, is of private interpretation. No. The men of old were given utterance by the Holy Ghost. It doesn't come alone. It's not conjured by a man. Every scripture coming out of your spirit by the inspiration of God. It's not alone. It comes with power. He says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah, somebody. He says, there's no scripture. This doesn't exist. One without, that is only of private interpretation. That is only to the power of man to conclude. No. It carries both the interpretation of the spirit and the divine application of the same. The Greek word there is epilusis. God just doesn't send a word. No. He sends a word with the grace to interpret it and apply the application. That is why he says, and that word shall, it, it shall prosper in the thing that I send it. When the word of God comes in your spirit, it has to prosper. 
Because it comes both with the interpretation by the Holy Ghost and the grace to apply what is interpreted. When the Bible says you shall heal the sick, woo! You come both with the grace to carry the interpretation of the same and to apply what is interpreted. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody say, I carry the grace. Both to interpret and apply the word of God. So as I say, you find Christians or many people who are fighting wars every day, every night. People are fighting, they're praying, they're casting out devils. They're separating themselves from things that will never leave them. They're speaking and confessing right and they're dying and being buried every day. And they're saying everything right like they ought to are. They're speaking and speaking. But some of them, in the middle there, you start to sense spots in their fists. Of love. You didn't get it. <laughs> the Bible says, speaking the truth in love. He says that we might grow up in Him in all things. The revelation of truth is in love. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The revelation of truth is in love. He says, speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him. He says, into him, into him, into him. That's so deep. That we may grow up into him in all things. Oh! You walk like him. You talk like him. You demonstrate power like him. You look like him. You respond like him. You react like him. You believe like him. You heal like him. You cast out devils like him. You teach like him. You instruct like him. You rebuke like him. You deal with devils like him. But now there's posts, like the Bible calls them, in our feasts of charity. Or the feasts of love. They are sports. Some people wake up in the morning and they look like they are believing God. But then when you start looking at them, they have sports. They have places that are rebukable in their faith. They have places in them that are rebukable in their faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. When men carry spots in their feasts of love, the Bible says they start feeding themselves without fear. Clouds that are without rain. They are carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit. Twice dead. Plucked up from the root. Because you are not perfected in faith. You're not, you have spots in your faith. And faith that worketh in love. Oh, who is getting it? You're getting it? I believe you are all your spirit is. So how can you be a cloud without rain? The message Bible says, see how a watch of your love, feast as you worship together. They are giving you a black eye, caressing shamelessly, grabbing anything that is a nail down. There are puffs up of smoke, pushed by gusts of wind. Let autumn trees strip clean of leaf and fruit, doubly dead pulled by the roots. The Bible says they are puffs of smoke. They are nothing. They speak very swelling words, but they don't have results of the same. Says, oh, this is going to happen in my life. I declare, I declare it. And then you speak it and talk it. But then when we examine your life, there are spots in this commandment. There are spots in faith. Hallelujah, somebody. So we need to give people skill in the use of the word. Because... Babes, people who protect milk, they, they are unskillful. They don't understand skill. They don't understand the principle of skill. They don't know that the word of God is handled in a certain skill. The word there for skill is applicable wisdom. There's a wisdom that teaches you to apply the word of God. You don't just apply it. You don't just think that because you've spoken all right things, that means that's enough for it to work in your life. No, you have to apply, to yield yourself to it a certain way. So it will produce results a certain way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah again. Let me share something. In James chapter 1 verses 5. Give me the amplified of that. I need to go a bit deeper here. 
He says, if any of you are deficient in wisdom, okay, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and gradually without reproaching or fault finding and it will be given him. But, he says, only it must be in faith. Somebody say it must be in faith. With no, he says, it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, that is no hesitation. You don't ask with hesitation, praise God. No doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates or doubts, is like the billowing surge out of the sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. You see again the winds come back here. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. And he continues to say, For truly, let not such a person imagine that he will. He will. Don't even imagine that you will receive anything you ask of from the Lord. The Bible says that for being, he is as a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute. irresolute. He is unstable, unreliable, and uncertain. Now, I love the way Amplified says it. About everything he thinks, he feels, and decides. He thinks, he feels, and decides. This is the man who, he's talking of a man who is in the walk of faith. Not the man who has not in the faith. No, we're talking of men trying to walk on water, not men in the boat here. So let me give you an example. You believe God for healing. I receive healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive healing. Praise God. I receive what? Healing. Now, what shows that you're unstable? When you receive healing, okay, and then you say, I have received healing in my spirit because it was given to me in my spirit. Then you start, some people start doing acts of faith. Praise God. Acts of what? Of faith. I've seen some throw away drugs. I've seen some, you know, walking out of bed. I've seen some refusing to go see doctors. There's all these things. It's okay. All of that, it's up to you and how much faith you have. I don't advise left men to leave medicine. You understand what I'm saying? But I also don't advise them to stay on it. <laughs> Praise God. Be it done unto you according to your faith. If you believe you can live without tablets, you better not die. Because if you die, we shall preach against you. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. You know, people say, ah, I believe, I believe, I, I don't even need a tablet. Pooh, then the person dies. No, 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 no. If you're at the level where we're building faith, I would rather you swallow the tablets and we build faith. Swallow it. We would rather preserve you there while we build faith to a point where healing comes. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. When the healing comes, you can leave the tablets because they're also there for you. You understand what I'm saying? They're important if you need them. But if a man says, I'm not going to swallow tablets, I don't tell him, swallow them by force. No, no, no. That's your choice. You better not die. You better not worsen. The moment you worsen, I take you to hospital myself. <laughs> because your faith should work. Somebody say, faith should work. It should work. Faith should work. Praise God. Hallelujah. It should work. So somebody believes that, and then they, they get out of bed, right? Then they are thinking like they're healed. They start doing things like people who are out of bed, who are, who are not sick, right? And then it increases a bit, Ugh, then they go back again to bed. <laughs> now, it's, it's fair to say that this person is unstable in thought. It's fair to say that this person is unstable in decision. But many people don't understand. There is also instability in feeling. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're feeling pain and you believe God for healing, eh? and you're saying, I believe God for healing, stability is force yourself to feel good. Or you might wake up in the pain, even if it insists. Force yourself to feel good. At one point, if you should give in to the pain to think or imagine or respond a certain way, then you're unstable. Of course, here yeah, you don't hear many amens because... <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. 
If in your mind you think you're going to get the job, you're going to get it. How do you know that men, how do you know that people have, um, how do you know that certain people are double minded? When you start hearing plan B's and C's, contingencies, praise God. You now have to do this, eh? And I'm believing God for this, eh? But I had planned to do the other thing because I was like, just in case it doesn't work. <laughs> Faith has no B and C. Uh-uh. Faith is A and A. Let your nay be nay and your yeah be yeah. For all Christ, things in Christ are yeah. And the men to the glory of God. Hallelujah, somebody. You don't plan things and yet you also have like another plan now, you know. Eh? I'm believing God, but you know things might... So, let me put a little thing here, such that in case the other one fails, I can fall back to this. But then you're saying, but I'm a believer. You know, I believe God. And then some people, just by sheer luck, they go through a situation. And then they say, oof, faith. (laughs) That's not faith. That is not faith. That is not faith. That is not faith. That's why I tell people, hmm? When the Bible says, guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. Everything stems from there. He says, and you shall serve the Lord your God. Listen. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. He says, and he will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The Hebrew word there for midst of thee is in your heart. That means sickness does not begin in the body. Sickness begins when you conceive it in your heart that you're sick. You didn't get it. It's not the pain on the body. It's the conception of it in the heart. Because the heart is like a ground. The word of God is like a seed. It is planted in the ground. You understand what I'm saying? And that seed grows and sprouts into something. It's not the pain you're feeling. It's the admitting in your heart. Because it begins with a heart issue. Remember when he's dealing with the issues of the word? He says the carnal man cannot receive. He cannot admit in his heart the thoughts, the teachings of God. He says that the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings. That means when the word of God comes, it goes directly to your heart. When everything external comes, it goes directly to your heart. You can have all the symptoms of cancer. But if cancer is not in your heart. If cancer is not in your heart. Let the symptoms come all they want. They are wasting time. But some people admit into their heart. You know the word admission. They will come into their heart. They take it into their heart. They receive it. They respond to it. You understand what I'm saying? And so somebody saying, oh, I, I'm believing God for healing, but there are things you've admitted in your heart. How do I know? The way you're talking. So this, um, I was diagnosed with cancer, but I'm believing God for healing. You have already admitted it in your heart that you have cancer, but you're believing God for healing. You know, this stuff is too crazy. If you're not crazy enough, you can't understand me. But when you get to a point of understanding that you don't live by vitamin C, you don't live by painkillers, you live by faith. It says that just shall live by faith. When you get to understand that faith is the reason why you are alive, not those, those, those vitamins you're swallowing every morning. Yes, you're swallowing them for your body, but they're not the reason why you are alive. You are alive. You're not alive because, oh, good feeding. No, 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 listen. There are men who feed so well and they get heart attacks and die. There are mad men on the streets right now eating so badly. But they are healthy and living many years. Many people who are in hospital right now admitted they are not mad men on the streets eating dirty stuff. Uh-uh. They are guys who eat clean stuff, vegetable stuff. You understand? They've become vegans. It's a lifestyle to eat healthy, healthy heat eating. You see, somebody's eating healthy, but is believing wrong. And he thinks that by eating healthy and believing wrong, they are going to have the equation of divine health. 
Hallelujah. My God eats meat for sacrifice. Somebody shout hallelujah. You're not even healthy because you are eating well. Or because you're using salad master. Ah. My grandfather died more than a hundred years old and something. He wasn't feeding on salad master. Guys are on salad master and they're dying at 60, 30, 40. The just shall live by faith. He says now life and death are there. They're in the power of your tongue. You choose. As for me and my house, we choose life. I choose life. I, oh, I'm going to live. I plan to live so long in the mighty name of Jesus. It ain't mean that I won't eat vegetables. No. I only eat them because they are green. But not because they sustain me. No. Let me tell you what sustains us. When you wake up in the morning. And you start to say, Robo, Stakamando, Zala, Ko, Prakatala, Zire, Katala, Hoste, Pepa. Building yourself up. In your most holy faith. Some of you have read of a documentary where they discovered science has proved that people who speak in tongues live longer. Science! Oh, Rabakota Lamando Ziba Katale. Ko Riba Zalaba Ko Pranda Hosta. You wake up in the morning and you are Yako Raba Zelebost. You speak to antibodies, Mako Prokote, Sita Lara Kosele. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Spots, little things. My father, a couple of years ago, suffered with heart disease. And so when we were, I was applying in the bank, they used to ask us these questions. You know those health questions where you go for checkup and stuff? And then they ask, has anybody in your family suffered from hypertension? I said no. Because I know the family I'm talking about. Paul didn't have hypertension. Peter did not have hypertension. Moses did not have hypertension. David did not have hypertension. Jesus, the Son of God, did not have hypertension. He is the Father from where all families derive their names. I'm born of God, not of flesh and blood, nor the will of man. Do I have a witness? Because they say, oh, you know, if somebody in your family has suffered this, there's a likelihood. How can I admit that nonsense in my heart? That there's a likelihood of me suffering the sickness of my great-grandfather. What has the blood done? Hallelujah. He says we are members of his body, his blood, and his bones. Oh! We're members. Of his flesh. If your family has... Uh, oh, then... Oh, that you're not going to marry a woman because she has sickle cells. What are you talking about? Sickle cells. Genetic sickle cells. It's not in scripture. That is not in scripture. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Then they go for sickle cell checkup. Sickle cells for sickle cell checkup. They say, ah, this one. What I'm saying is so foolish to many people, but no Bible reader can debate what I'm saying. No Bible reader can debate what I'm saying. Listen, how many generations do you have to go to, through to understand how many genes can catch disease? Many generations. Many, many generations. Many, many generations. Of course we have reservations on some diseases like HIV for the reason that you might have married this person and you're both believing and yet your faith is fake. 
And then you, you both get infected in the name of faith. You understand what I'm saying? But sickle cells. Am I making some sense here? Then it says, oh, but I'm believing God. No, no, that's a spot right there. 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 If you wake up and believe that greater is he which is in you than he that is in the world. Pros is there. Pros in Aluze is there. We prayed with a woman who was raised, born with, an, with the sickle cells. The cells became normal. They became normal. Well, now, what can't God do? What can't God do? There is nothing the Lord cannot do. There is nothing God cannot do. Tell somebody there is nothing God cannot do. God can fix anything and everything. Recently they called me for a young girl. She had a car accident. Broke a bone here. Broke a bone in uh, the joints in there. The, the, the damage was so bad that it damaged the, kid, the liver. And then they took her to hospital. And then they tried to repair this bone. The one of the of the heat they couldn't the, the way it was broken they said you might you will live in a wheelchair but then there's even no point of living in a wheelchair because your liver is dying the liver started reducing from 100 to 70 to 50 to 50 40 they called me when her liver was at 30 and the doctors released her from hospital and they said there's nothing medically we can do with this condition Somebody told me about it. I said, let me drive there. And I remember telling this young girl, I told her, look, before we even pray here, what we need to fix is the state of your heart. I must make sure by the time I leave, your heart is healed. The place that hears God is free. Are you hearing me? Laid hands on her, the first miracle. These bones that the doctors couldn't operate, they came in order immediately. She started walking. The sister yesterday, two, two, three days ago, sent me a message and said, from that day she has never been on a drug and her liver is improving and healing by percentage. She's walking, she's eating, she's healthy, she's getting her skin back. She's coming to give a testimony soon. I said, that is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. When the Bible says that with God all things are possible, with God all things are possible. Tell somebody I'm not about to die. Tell them I'm not about to die. My business is not about to die. My ministry is not going to die. Tell somebody, tell them, tell them. My marriage will not die. It will not die. My children will not fail. Come on, say it from the inside. Upward and upward. Only from glory to glory. From faith to faith. From light and to light. As you're speaking those things, something is taking place in your spirit. It's called faith. The mother sent an email on Facebook and says, My daughter is walking. She couldn't stop screaming. My daughter is walking. Praise God. Because we carry the material. <laughs> Woo! Tell somebody I carry the material. That is why when you understand the definition of faith, you realize substance precedes evidence. You can't speak of evidence without the material. It's that evidence, that material we see. And we start carrying the evidence of things not seen. Because we carry the material. You're not just somebody who can believe God to heal. No, you're somebody with a healing faculty. It's called charismatos. The source of the miracle. 
Oh, it's inside of you. He says, out of you shall flow of living water. And when men receive this water, they're healed. When men receive this water, they're delivered. When men receive, oh my goodness, tell somebody I'm an answer. Tell somebody I'm an answer. Praise God. In Psalms, there's a scripture I've seen awfully abused, grossly misinterpreted. When they read Psalms 30 verses 5, many of you know that. Psalms 30 verses 5. He says, for his anger endures, but for a moment, and his favor is a life, is, is life, right? And then they read, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Do you know that many Christians read that as weeping will endure, or weeping endures for a night? Thank you. Whipping may and you. It may. It may not. When God uses the language may, it means somewhere in this equation there is a choice. Do I have a witness here? It's not a must. That weeping is there. It may, but it's not a must. It's not a must that if you have to weep in every situation. It's not a must. You may weep, you may not, but it's not a must. Okay, so if it is a may, may, above just that word may, is literally, there is a possibility of. But the good news is that where there is possibility of, there must be choice for the believer. You can choose to refuse to weep. Proverbs fifteen fifteen. He says, all the days, all the days of affliction are evil. That means they attract evil. But when the path there for affliction, it's men who have admitted it in their hearts that they are afflicted. The moment you admit affliction, you'll attract evil. He says, but he that is of a merry heart, the Bible says, he has a continual, non-stop feast. It's continual. You can enjoy salvation. It can be wonderful every day. I, for me, every day I wake up, I smile, I get it from my heart, as I am happy tonight, it's wonderful. It doesn't mean that things don't come, but they don't endure a whole night. No. That's why he calls them light afflictions, which are but for a moment, you understand? Not for a night. No way. No way. Oh, some of have endured this for 20 years. No, 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 no. You don't need to endure it for 20. You don't need to. Oh, no, but uh, you don't know what you're talking about. No, 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 no. You don't know what you're talking about. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 4. Or maybe begin from verse 1. I want to show you a mystery here. He says, but of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Right? But you yourselves have, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Right? Listen. He says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall have no escape. This is people in the world. He says, but you... Brethren, are not in darkness. You're not in darkness. Or maybe give the amplified of that. He says, but you are not in, listen, given unto the power. You're not given unto the power of darkness, brethren, that that day should overtake you by surprise like a thief. Oh yes, it comes for them as a thief. You're not in darkness. And the next verse says, for ye are all sons of light and sons of the day. We're not sons of weeping. We're sons of light. Tell somebody I'm a son of the day. In the mighty name of Jesus. He says that we do not belong either to the night or to the darkness. He's trying to explain to you. Weeping and yours, that for the night. No, you're not. You're not a child of the night. You don't understand. Did you get it? You're not a child of weeping. You're not a 
child of weeping. Next verse. He says, accordingly then, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us keep wide awake, alert, watchful, cautious, and on our guard, and let us be sober. Look at the word sober there. Look at the definition of sober there. Look at the definition of sober there. Come. Collected and circumspect. That's a sober man. That's a sober man. Somebody who is calm, collected and circumspect. When you come in a storm, that's a man who is sober. That's a man who is sober. Colossians chapter 3 verses 15. Give me the amplified of that. He says, and let the peace, the soul harmony which comes from Christ. He says, rule and act as an umpire continually, non-stop in your hearts. This peace decides and settles with finality all the questions that rise in your minds in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ's one body you are all called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God. Always. That's a man under peace. They are always giving thanks. Always giving thanks. One time I said with a small group of people, about a man one time I met in New Jersey. He's a guy called Joe Bellina. I, I love that man. Very deep teacher of the word. Very deep teacher of the word. So he used to go in faith fellowship, the church of uh, the late pastor T. Demola. And this guy one time, he was sent to pick me to He talks the word. You don't want him to stop. He's speaking the word every time. Every time. He, he doesn't know how to talk anything else. And I love such people. Because evil communication. Communication. Evil communication. Praise God. So, we're driving. And then this guy is quiet alone. He's driving his car. Then the next thing, you know, in just a few seconds, he says, Ooh, Then he says, Brother Joe, what's up? He says, Joe the Lord. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, thank you, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! Mm, mm. What's up, Brother Joe? Mm, Joe the Lord. Praise God, hallelujah. Mm, mm. He got married very late. Very, very late. He's 50 some and probably his kids are babies. He told me, you know what? I married so late. But it's beautiful. Praise God, hallelujah. Remember? It's not how you begin. It's how you end. Praise God, hallelujah. He's always praising God, hallelujah. That's a man who has peace. You wake up in one of the worst storms and you start saying, Praise God, Makora Bakola. Oh, praise the Lord always with a thankful appreciation. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise God. Those are words that shouldn't leave your mouth. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise God. Sit in the car. Kapoom. Thank you, Lord. Mm, praise God. Hallelujah. Get on the foot. Thank you, Lord. Dress smart in the mirror and say, mm, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Check your bank account and they've not yet sent the pay. And you say, oh, hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Good measure, press down, second together, bakaraba. That's a man. He says that peace should answer all your questions. God, how is it going to be? And the peace comes in your spirit. And it tells you it is well. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my ministry. Thank you. The lemma walking. The blind are seeing. We are growing. We are increasing every other day. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then you probably look in the back and the people are not yet coming. And you, oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And then you look in the back and it's full. And you're like, oh, praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah! Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph, and he maketh manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. That means every place knows God by us. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness?
You have to get to a place where when you choose to believe God, it is settled regardless of the circumstance. Oh, but what if the person dies? You're not the first one. Lazarus died. And Jesus said his sickness shall not end in death. You're not the first one. A Roman centurion comes to our Lord. You remember? He tells him, I have a sick servant. I, I'm not a Jew. I'm not in the covenant. Remember, healing was a covenant issue. If you go back in Matthew, you remember the, the woman who comes to him and he says that healing is a children's bread, for you shall not cast the dogs what belongs to the children. He says, but even the dogs eat of the crumbs from the master's table. In the 28th verse, the Bible says, he answered unto a woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. That was a Gentile having faith in a Jewish covenant. And it worked. How much more? Ye which has faith and is in the covenant. The Bible says we've been grafted in. What means you're the Israel by faith. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Remember the Roman centurion? He comes to Jesus. And his dear servant was sick. You remember the story? And then he comes to him and he tells him, Look, I am a man under authority. When I tell my uh, soldiers, jump, they just have to ask how high. If I tell them, go, they go. If I tell them, come, they come. And he says, no, you just send a word. I know you. I don't need... This was a Roman centurion. And Jesus says he had never seen such great... He called it great faith. Great faith. You see a man accessing the Christ and receiving healing. When Isaiah beholds the finished work of Christ as the Lamb of God which was slain from the foundation of the world in Revelation... He knew that it was a future experience. How do I know? Because Peter says it. That of which salvation the prophets of old did prophesy about, did signifying about the death and sufferings of God until you, of Christ, until you, unto whom it was revealed that not unto them, but unto us they did minister these things. That means God not only did, did he show the revelation of the death and resurrection of the Christ to Isaiah, but he also showed Isaiah that it was not for him, but for us which were to come, did they minister these things. He understood it. But because he was a man of faith, he entered revelation. He said, ah, ah, ah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes. We are healed. He says, ah, even if you're yet to come, the fact that I've gotten the revelation in the spirit by a finished work in revelation, I don't care whether you've come in the body and that it should manifest to those to whom Christ shall appear in the flesh. I claim it. Ah. How much more you? Tell your neighbor how much more you. How much more you? If you choose to believe, believe. Give me the keys. If you choose to believe, believe. If you don't choose to believe, don't choose to believe. But the moment your mouth says that I'm believing God, don't put any spots and a rebukable experience in your faith. Don't. Do you know why he calls it the good fight? Because you know the end. He didn't say fight men of God. He says fight the good fight. He didn't say fight your co-wife, fight the brother, fight your sister. No. Fight the good fight of faith. That's what he told you to fight. I don't know why ministers fight each other. I don't even understand it. Preach the gospel. Just preach the gospel. Just preach the gospel. Hallelujah, somebody. He gave us one fight. He, even at the end of his life, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have. Paul was confident in his life. I have fought a good fight. In Timothy, at the beginning, chapter 1, he tells Timothy, fight this good fight. You see, you, you, must, you must know, you must know that 
faith. If it is faith, that fight will be good for you. In fact, when you read the literal translation of the Greek word, therefore, the good one, he calls it the excellent, the pleasant, the desired. Are you hearing me? It is the desired fight. Why is it desired? Because you know it. Let me tell you. It's not going to kill you. You're not going to fail. You're not going to fail. Get it out of your head. That body will not fail you. Your ministry will not fail. Sink it in your head. You will not be poor. You will receive it in your spirit. Sink it in your heart. You will not. You will not fail. You will not fail. You see, even as I'm speaking that, I'm sensing a gift of faith. You, you know that there are some people who receive a gift of faith through the word of God. You see, the Bible says we saw him on the mountain. We were with him. We carried experiences. But it says, but you have a more sure word of prophecy. For which you do good to heed to as a light that shines in darkness. Until the day dawn. And the death star rise in your heart. That is Jesus. Because you are children of the day. I have purposed my course in this life. And I have decided that I'm going to be a successful man of God. Fanero is not going to fail. This ministry is not going to fail. No man listening to me will fail. No, we have come a long way. You have seen men throw clutches. You have seen men walk out of wheelchairs. You have seen blind eyes open and deaf ears hear. You have seen cancerous tumors and swellings, fibroids disappear before your very own eyes. And that same God is going to do way more. You have seen people's finances change. You have seen marriages restored. You have seen things that for no, in any way, you cannot doubt the God of the Bible. I'm going to pray with you. But I feel faith comes. Faith comes. Some of you are going to do things that you could never have dreamed of in your wildest dream. And I mean, you see, while I'm speaking, it's just being confirmed by the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing of possibilities. That thing that changes impossible things to possible. There was a time we did not believe in the possibility of things. There was a time we did not believe that certain things were possible in our lives. But we have embraced the word of God. We have embraced, we have embraced the spirit of faith. He says, and this was the spirit of faith. For as we believed, we spake. And therefore, this is the spirit. He says, for I have spoken. Because I've believed. He says, we believe and therefore we speak. We don't speak ourselves into faith. No, we believe and speak out the abundance of revelation of faith in our spirits. This faith will open blind eyes. It will heal the sick. It will fix your family. It will fix your marriage. C start to carry them here. May faith rise in your spirit. May you believe the impossible today. Come on, somebody raise your hands and speak to God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never will come to an end. Speak in other tongues if you have them. Create something right now. 
create something right now. Just create something. It's going to manifest in a few days. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never will come to an end. of healing the gift of healing and I mean healing tangible power of the ghost his mercy receive it heal the sick cast out devils even as I'm speaking that gift if you're sick and you're here receive your healing now if you have a clutch throw it if you have a wheelchair walk out oracle bros elemandos Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. God fixes somebody's finances. God fixes somebody's marriage. If you're a minister, speak for your ministry right now. Speak words that will literally shake hell and earth. And heaven. I feel that there are things that appear like they were dead, but they are going to receive life. If there is something in your life and you feel it has died, I beseech thee by the mercies of God, call it out in the name of Jesus. It is going to leave. 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 My soul will find rest. I see block tubes are opening. Somebody is going to conceive very soon. Very soon. They are saying your barren and your tubes can't open. You're going to conceive very soon, said the Lord. And you testify under this word that day that you conceive. In fact, it will be as early as this coming week. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Of course, there are things that have not been mentioned. But that I mean that they have not been answered. Now, praise Him like He has answered. Just Praise Him like He has answered. I don't care how crazy it is. Let them give you a few days, a few weeks, a few months. Macabra Dolores. Praise Him, oh, thank you, Lord. Come on. Praise Him like something has taken place in your life. Something tangible, something undeniable, something eye has not seen, ear has not heard, has not entered the hearts of men. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm a child of the day. Joy is my story. Unspeakable, full of glory. 
The Bible says with joy I shall draw from the wells of salvation. That means salvation is available where joy is. Hallelujah. It is so done. It cannot be otherwise. Come on. If you believe and have no doubt, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. It is done. It is done. It is finished. I don't care how crazy it has sounded. Believe in your heart from today. Start acting the part. Respond and act like it. Don't waver. Don't grow back. Don't doubt in your soul. Don't doubt in your decision. Don't choose to go here and then come out and then decide another. Don't doubt on your feeling. Some of you, the moment you feel something, you doubt. No, 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 no. no. It's done. All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. Hey, hey. Woo! Are you seeing what I'm seeing? All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around. Tell somebody, all for you. <laughs> Tell them all for you. All for you. Things are turning around for you. <laughs> Tell that pregnant woman, all for you. <laughs> all for you. All for you. Things are turning around. Come and receive Jesus. Things are turning for me. My finances are turning for me. My ministry is turning around for me. Oh, things are for your sex. That through the thanksgiving of many, this might redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. Because our inward man is renewed daily. Hallelujah. Joy of the Lord. <laughs> all for me, all for me, all for me. Things are turning around for me. All for me, all for me, all for me. <laughs> I feel something is brewing up for me. Oh! The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.